This lady uh, we've been following for several years. She had um, a Whipple in 2006 for an adenocarcinoma in an IPMN. And since that time, she's been having recurrent pancreatitis so often now that she doesn't even come into the hospital anymore. She just stays at home, stops eating for a couple of days, takes some Demerol, and then it goes away. I think she probably has five or six episodes a year. Every year we do an EUS on her. She has signs of chronic pancreatitis, no signs of PD obstruction at the anastomosis, and this is just another follow-up. So I'm not quite sure why she keeps having pancreatitis. Uh, obviously the primary concern is that she would have a recurrence, uh, but the, the tests don't seem to show that. Okay, it's was sent to the dans la bouche. Voilà, respirez bien. Voilà. Okay. In the back of the mouth here. Okay. Attention. Okay. Pranche la tête vers l'avant. Avalé un scoop. Encore un scoop. There we go. Okay. So we're in. Essaye de dormir si tu peux. Okay, so there's her liver. So again, we stay in the center of the liver. Okay, you have one end here, one end here. We stay in the center. And then we're going to torque. You can see the portal vein coming out of the liver. And then there's her pancreas. So you've got portal vein, splenic vein, SMV going this way. Obviously, she's had a Whipple, so the head of her pancreas is now gone. We're getting a really nice picture of the anastomosis. There's the PD. And you know, it, it, it's really not obstructive in the sense that if you look, her PD is actually larger further away from the anastomosis. So if she had obstruction at the anastomosis, I would expect it to be larger here and maybe get smaller. So it's really, to me, just chronic pancreatitis. There's, there's really no signs of anything. We're getting beautiful pictures here, right, right to the anastomosis. And we get this every year when we do her. And really nothing else. Her pancreatic duct is a little prominent. I'll have to look at the other ones to see if it was getting a little bigger, but I don't think there's really any, any difference here from what we've seen the other times. Okay, take it out to the tail. Obviously, we want to really carefully look and see if there isn't uh, a, a, a new IPMN somewhere else in the rest of the pancreas. Nice views of this pancreas following the duct out to the tail. Very nice views. There we go, all the way. There's the spleen there, so I'm pretty much to the end. There's some more pancreas there, zoom in a bit. Give it some left on the left right, and then hold that with my thumb, and I'll get a longer view of the PD here, going out to the tail. And just follow until you just can't follow it anymore. So it all looks very good. But this is really a coarsely lobular pancreas. And this is, this is to me, uh, really typical EUS chronic pancreatitis. Get this picture into your mind. If you don't see this kind of really, you know, coarse lobulation, you shouldn't call it chronic pancreatitis. Because this is basically equal to five criteria because they have hyperechoic margins, irregular, an irregular duct, stranding, foci, and then lobules. And you can't have lobules unless you have stranding and foci. Okay, so when you have lobules, you already have the other two criteria because the foci make the strands and the strands make the lobules. And also, basically, everybody who has a lobular pancreas has hyperechoic margins and an irregular duct. That just, that's just the way it is, okay? So that's why lobulation is automatically five criteria, okay? And if you see people saying, oh, well, it's lobular, but I'm not seeing any foci, that doesn't make any sense, okay? You can't have a lobular pancreas and have one criteria for chronic pancreatitis. That doesn't make sense. And as I say, if you stick to using just lobulation and calcification as your diagnostic criteria for chronic pancreatitis, then you won't overcall chronic pancreatitis, if you ask me. And those are the criteria that have the best inter-observer agreement. So really stick to lobulation calcifications, and then you're, you're pretty much safe, and you won't be overcalling or undercalling chronic pancreatitis. So just to show you again, when you start at the liver, again, the liver's in the front, the pancreas is in the back. So if you want to get to the pancreas, pushing in isn't going to help you. You've got to torque to take the, the vein out to the back, and then you get to the pancreas here. Okay? So for the mediastinum, it's very simple. You go to 30 centimeters, yeah. find the left atrium, 
Right next to it is the pulmonary artery. If you don't see the pulmonary artery, if you just see left atrium, torque a bit right, then you'll see it right there. And then this is it right here. This is the subcarina with a little bit of pericardial fluid, very small node in here. AP window, very simple. AP window's on the left side. It's left, it's 4L. So you want to pull back, you see a bit of trachea right there, and then just tip up and torque left. And there it is right there. Pulmonary artery, aorta, AP window, okay, it's 4L.